A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Good morning, fellow mathematicians! Welcome back to the one video of the week. And you know what the funny thing is? My channel banner still says that I'm posting pi videos per week. And even with one video per week, it's, it's still a true statement. Absolutely fantastic. I just love engineering. It's, it's, it's so great. So great. Papa, peak comedy, peak comedy. So I haven't posted any kind of integral in quite a while. And I thought I might come back with an absolute banger, namely this absolutely beautiful individual. It's a very nice generalization, which actually allows for very, very beautiful um, analytic result, namely the integral from zero to infinity of one over one plus x to the nth power. And I'm going to show you the best way that I could possibly come up with, which doesn't involve stuff like Laplace transform, or oh, this is such a hassle, Laplace transforms are absolutely terrible on this integral or complex analysis. Namely, what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the Leibniz rule for integration or in popular media known as Feynman integration. I, I hate that term so much. It's absolutely pre and integral just like the sponsors of this video. And if you're not familiar with pre yet, keep watching till the end of the video. I've got to tell you more about the website. It's absolutely fantastic. And now we are going to dive right in. So. What we are going to do is at first, as usual with the Leibniz rule for integration, all the relevant links down in the description if you don't know about that, is that we are going to parameterize this integral. Namely, what we are going to do is we are going to introduce the absolutely um, naturally <laughs> incoming parameterization um, of okay, from zero to infinity. So at first our denominator is going to stay how it is, one plus x to the nth power dx. And with the Leibniz rule for integration, we are always trying to find some kind of parameterization in here such that we can get rid of the differentiation step um, of some kind of denominator or something which is a hassle to us in integration. And for this, I'm going to introduce a function which goes nicely to zero as for example, our upper bound approaches infinity. And most of the time, Time exponential functions actually do a really good job um, of doing that exact thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the numerator as being e to the negative t times and if we were to differentiate this exponential function. We want to get rid of our denominator in the process. How, ca how can we do this if we differentiate with respect to t? I mean, we are just going to plug our denominator up here into the exponent. Does make sense, right? And then we are going to differentiate this whole parameterized function with respect to t and then we are going to see what we are going to get. Now, what happens if we take the differential of i in t? Well, this is going to turn out to be. Okay, at first we are going to differentiate this whole expression. Since the upper and lower bounds are not dependent on t, we are just going to interchange our uh, integral and our differential without any restrictions under the condition that everything converges absolutely, blah, blah, blah. L lot of conditions to check, but we are just going to assume that we can safely interchange um, differential and our um, integral. Hence, we are going to drag it to the inside, leaving us with the integral from zero to infinity of, okay, one over one plus x to the nth power is completely independent of t. But what is with respect to t is our exponential function, obviously, hence the introduction of the function in the first place. And what we're going to do now is we're going to apply this differential operator to the exponential function now. I mean, differentiating an exponential function in normal case ex is extremely easy because it's nicely differentiable and there are a lot of rules out there to differentiate an exponential function. What we're going to do is, obviously, we are going to use the chain rule. Our exponential function is going to be preserved and then we are going to differentiate our exponent with respect to t. We are taking the differential with respect to t. The differential of t is just one, but our negative one plus x to the nth power is going to stay as a constant. Meaning we are going to drag this one plus x to the nth power with a negative sign to the front, canceling out in the process with the one over one plus x to the nth power, leaving us just with a negative sign, which we can bring to the outside using the linearity of the integral. And on the inside, we are going to be left with e to the negative t, and then also with, um, one plus x to the nth power. And all of this integrate with respect to x. I hope you could follow everything I did here. This is just simple differentiation of an exponential function. And now what I'm going to do is, you're going to notice that by the function equation of the exponential function, e to the negative t times one plus x to the nth power is the same as e to the negative t times e to the negative t times x to the nth power. Meaning we can bring the e to the negative t to the outside, leaving us overall 
in the middle process with negative e to the negative t and the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t times x to the nth power integrate with respect to x. And now this right here is a very easy to integrate function. And for this we are going to introduce a substitution at first. Okay, um, I'm going to put the substitution here. So what we are going to say is um, we are going to let eta, I don't care, be equal to just t times x to the nth power. This is what we are going to introduce it at. And now we are going to differentiate both sides here implicitly, leaving us with d eta being hence nothing other than, I mean, we are integrating with respect to x, so we have to implicitly differentiate with respect to x, leaving us with um, n times t times x to the n minus 1 power dx. And now we are going to bring everything to the left hand side except for the dx, leaving us overall with, under the condition that nothing is equal to zero here, and, and we are going to assume t to be strictly positive, okay, makes our life easier and won't change um, anything on the original assumption right here. Okay, with the boundary conditions and we need to uh, keep it positive to let our integral converge in the first place and hence we can divide by it leaving us with d eta divided by n times t and also with x to the 1 minus nth power is equal to dx. Now we are not done yet with um, introducing everything in the substitution namely what we want to do is we want to also get rid of the x to the 1 minus nth power. I mean this is kind of easy to do because um, on the one hand we know what x to the negative nth power is. If we were to divide both sides by t up here, we are going to get eta over t is x to the nth power taking the reciprocal on both sides, leaving us overall with x to the negative nth power being equal to and now we get t divided by eta. Now what we still have left is x to the first power. But what is x to the first power overall? I mean for this what we are going to do is we are just going to take the nth root right here. Meaning we are going to get that um, eta to the and the nth root is nothing but to the 1 over nth power divided by t to the 1 over nth power is equal to x. And now we are done with all the substitution steps, namely what we are going to get overall is that after doing the substitution we are going to get that the x is hence nothing other than. Okay, we are going to get 1 over n times t. Also what we are going to get is, okay, we are going to get um, our x to the negative nth power is t divided by eta. You are going to notice that the t is going to cancel out in the process and also um, this part right here. It's the last thing that we are going to have um, apart from our differential. Namely this is going to give us eta to the 1 over nth power divided by t to the 1 over nth power d eta. And now we can plug everything in. It's kind of a mess okay to figure all of this out but it's, it's not too hard. It's a bit of algebra overall and exponentiation. Also what about the upper and lower bounds after doing the substitution? I mean if x goes to zero then eta over t is also going to go to zero in the process so the lower bound stays as it is and if x approaches infinity well then since we are on a positive interval our eta over t is also going to approach infinity since we choose t to be strictly greater than zero. Meaning in the process we are going to get that i prime with respect to t is hence nothing other than negative e to the negative t. Also what we are going to get is a bunch of constants. We are going to get this 1 over n times t to the 1 over nth power meaning this is going to give us n and t to the 1 over nth power the reciprocal of that is t to the negative 1 over nth power. And also the last thing that we are going to get inside of our integral is the integral from 0 to infinity. Obviously we are going to get after doing the substitution e to the negative eta and overall we are also going to get eta to the 1 over n minus 1 power. And all of this integrate with respect to eta. And you might be familiar with what we got right here. Okay, this right here is nothing other than the gamma function link in the description if you don't know what the gamma function is. It's basically just a continuous equivalent of the factorial. This right here is the gamma function with respect to 1 over n. Leaving us in the process with, and I'm going to put it here, i prime with respect to t is going to give us, we are going to get a negative e to the negative t over n. We are also going to have t to the negative 1 over n and then we are going to get the gamma function of 
1 over n. Gamma function of 1 over n is basically um, 1 over n minus 1 factorial, if I'm not mistaken. I'm always messing the minus 1 or plus 1 up, but never mind. It's something, something factorial, continuous factorial. Okay, this is what we got right now, but we are now at the differential of i with respect to t. Where we want to go back to is i with respect to t in and of itself, meaning we need to integrate it. This is a differential equation, so we need to integrate it. But also, in the process, we are going to apply boundary conditions, meaning upper and lower bounds to our integral, but very smartly such that we are going to end up with the integral that we actually desire in the process. Let us go through the four process here. What we are going to do is we are going to integrate i prime with respect to t. Okay. What you're going to notice is that if we were to plug in upper and lower bounds, we are going to make use of the fundamental theorem of, um, <laughs> I, I want to say engineering, calculus, meaning we are going to have i with respect to b minus i with respect to, well, basically just the um, lower bound. Okay, but we are going to plug upper and lower bounds smartly in such that we can, for example, let one of the um, upper or lower bounds vanish in the, in the process. So the integral plugged in with the upper and lower bounds and also the other one is going to end up with the integral that we desire. Now, how can we make, for example, i with respect to t vanish? As mentioned at the beginning, exponential functions especially those which are strictly increasing, are very good at approaching zero when t goes to infinity. And that's what we are going to do. We are going to say our upper bound, for example, I don't care if it's the upper or the lower bound, is going to go to infinity because e to negative infinity is going to make our integral vanish and the integral, the definite integral over zero is just going to be zero. Meaning, if we let t go to infinity on i, we are going to notice that all of this is going to vanish in the process, it's going to give us zero. And how can we get, using um, boundary conditions, back to our original integral i? Well, if we just say let t be equal to zero, then this is e to the zero of power, which is going to give us one, which is exactly what we have up here in the numerator, giving us the solution to our integral. Meaning we are just going to say that our lower bound is going to be equal to zero. Yeah. And this is basically um, anything that you need to know about this. And now we are just going to apply our integral operator also to the right hand side, which is exactly our integral that we got here. Um, and also <laughs> the final answer that we got here. Meaning what we're going to do is we are also going to notice that um, negative i of zero, which is nothing but negative i, our integral that we are seeking, is going to be equal to the integral from uh, zero to infinity of negative e to the negative t over n, so just applying the integral here, times t to the negative one over nth power times gamma of one over n. And here all that's really left to do is to now um, bring everything which is a constant to the outside and then let's see what the integral is going to evaluate to that we are going to be left with. Namely, you are going to notice at first that we have negative signs here all the way around. We can cancel those out. Negative one is not equal to zero, leaving us with i. Our answer is going to be equal to, okay, we got gamma of one over n and also divided by n times the integral from zero to infinity of, and now we got t to the negative one over nth power times e to the negative t integrate with respect to t. And this right here, once again, is just a gamma function. It's of the same similar form that we got right here. The only thing that's missing to get ourselves a gamma function, okay, the, the nice gamma function that we are seeking after, is a negative one up here in the exponent for our um, t, basically. And to get there, what we, um, yeah, exponent of our t. And to get there, what we are going to do is we are just going to add a zero. If you add a zero to the exponent, nothing is going to change. And the zero is going to be exactly plus one and then subtracting one. Meaning what we got right here is nothing other than the gamma function. That's an ugly gamma. The gamma function of, okay, and just one minus one of n. Yeah, it's as easy as it is. Leaving us with a final answer of i being equal to gamma of one of n times gamma of one minus one over n divided by n. And we're not done yet. This, this is a final answer, this is good, but we can do even better than that using Euler's refraction formula. It's one of my best friends. I really love Euler's refraction formula. It's such a powerful theorem in analytic number theory. Namely, what Euler's refraction formula is stating that if we have gamma of z and multiply it with gamma of one minus z, this is going to lead to, and now 
hold your horses down, okay? Pi divided by the sine of pa times z, okay? <laughs> well, pa and the sine of pa is going to pop up, which is really cool. And now what is our z in our case on the final answer? Well, our z is obviously 1 over n, leaving us with a final solution of i being equal to, okay, so we got a 1 over n, also we got a pa, so we got pa divided by n times the sine of pa over n. Yeah. And that's it. Pretty cool, right? And you can rewrite what we got here as being um, pa over n times the n. This is the cosecant of pa divided by n. Pretty cool, right? This is such a beautiful answer. And I can't believe that, yeah, at first I couldn't believe that there is an answer to this question, to this integral. It just seems way too good to be true. And I first saw the final answer using complex analysis in Schaum's outlines of um, complex analysis, which is really cool. Maybe you have seen my video before on the, it's, it's one of my most watched videos, on the integral of 1 over 1 plus x to the fourth power, where I presented an absolutely ridiculous way um, of figuring it out. You can find the link down there in the description. But I really enjoy this method of um, solving this integral. And if you also want to learn new tricks, if you think that stuff that we did today is something that you also want to learn, learning new tricks, getting the hang of nice mathematics like integrals, differentials, Leibniz roof integration, then I invite you to try out today's sponsor Brilliant who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. If you are new to the channel or maybe you just haven't heard about Brilliant before, let me give you a short and spicy introduction about what they offer you and why you should definitely check it out for yourself. Brilliant is an online learning platform and app which you can use on the go, obviously. It's an app you can use your mobile phone and learn something new each and every day, which offers you a wide variety of STEM-related courses. Nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it computer sciences, mathematics, maybe physics, want to learn something about chaos theory, Brian got you covered. No matter what you're looking for, no matter what you're striving for, want to learn something new, it doesn't matter, be it linear algebra, calculus, general relativity, they definitely got you covered. And way more than that, Brilliant has so much up their sleeve, you won't believe what they have to offer you. The thing that I enjoy the most about Brilliant are, personally, by far their visuals. Their visuals are one of a kind on the internet and I haven't seen something like this on the internet before. Just as an example, take a look at the geometry section. This is by far one of my most favorite examples that I like to show to people when introducing them to Brilliant. The geometry section is full of triangles where you can drag on corners to see relationships between angles and the side lengths and all the other cool stuff that you can find in elementary geometry. And the whole website is just full with this stuff. Want to learn something about why an integral works the way it does? They got an animation for you, something interactive that you can drag around and see, oh, okay, if I make the partition smaller and smaller, the area under the curve is going to be approximated even better using those smaller partitioned rectangles and the like. And it's just full of animations like this on their website. And if you are a sucker for animations, for visuals, you want to find out the intuition behind physical, mathematical, chemical um, concepts in general, then I invite you to try it brilliant today. It's seriously a one-of-a-kind experience that you should definitely test out on yourself. And if this feels like it's something for you, if you feel like you also want to try it out, you want to test yourself, maybe you want to go through the quizzes and just see if you can really learn something new using the interactive learning experience, then make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, brain.org slash flambelmaths. With it, you are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription if you really, really use the link. But you can also just check out the website by using the link and test a big portion of print already. So that's also a great deal already. So yeah, try it out and support the channel this way. And I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, make a comment, channel for like. And if you want to support the channel a bit more, buy those Infimum shirts I created. They look pretty cool. Or go over to STEM merch to get yourself some cool physics merchandise. And I'm until the next video. I'll see you guys a flammable day. Ciao.